Hello friends, it's Sarah from Sweet Sense from the Dollhouse. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, welcome back. I assure you it's not super cold in the dollhouse today. Um, I just decided to wear this scarf because I'm going to be cutting some wax and I don't want to give you guys um, a doll show, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, first things first, if you have never seen the original or the first two Swax Files videos, I highly suggest you check out my playlist and start there. Jumping in on the third video, this will just seem like the ramblings of a bloody mad woman. It won't make much sense to my regular subscribers who are very interested in this little mini series I have started. I am super happy that you guys are so excited. I will be uploading these little videos once a week. To be honest, I'm not really sure when. They just kind of go in wherever they fit. <laughs> and um, it's only gonna be about four or five videos in total and we're already on number three. So I thank you so much for your patience. Also, I wanna just put this out there. Don't take my word for anything, okay? As much as I can't stand people who just regurgitate biased information or they don't check multiple resources or they don't really have a bloody clue what they're talking about, they just regurgitate information that they don't even know is fact or they don't even know is true. I also don't like it when people just take one person's, one any person, even my word for things. So I'm super happy that our wheels are spinning in, in the same direction, but I always encourage people, don't take my word for it. Talk to other people, do your own research, look around, ask questions. Oh my goodness, forever, forever, forever. Never be afraid to ask questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. And if anyone ever wants to get you in trouble for asking questions, they've clearly got something to hide, right? So let's get into it. Today, I am also going to be cutting up a bunch of wax, hopefully, as we do this little video. <clears throat> so I have several bricks and chunk bags from the states that I picked up this past weekend. I need to cut that all up and get it in for friend mail. I also have some Scentsy bricks that I'm really not using just because again, it's not cut up, it's not convenient. Um, I'm on the very last two cubes or last cube, I guess, of cinnamon chai latte. And believe it or not, I, I'm, I'm about done to retire my other bricks for next year. I have seriously, and strange enough but true, been craving some spring and summer scents. So I wanna cut up the rest of these bricks and get them in the warmers because I have a feeling that I will have a newfound appreciation for sugar and shimmer now that it's getting closer to the spring here in here in unterrible. So I have also finished cutting up Barrett's Wax Crafts Peppermint Vanilla Dreams. It smells delicious. I have two more bricks and some chunks that I want to cut up as well. So let me get some stuff in the microwave and I'll be right back. So folks, next up we have Barrett's Wax Crafts 50-50 Brick, which is Josh's blend of Snoozy Melts plus Sinus Soothers. This is phenomenal. And all those little imported French lavender buds in the bottom. Oh, delicious. Puts you in a coma. And the Sinus Soothers on the bottom. For when you get sick. I already cut into this brick because I had friend mail that had to go out early this week. So the other part of this brick is on its way to England right now. Anyhow, let's get back to candle sweats. What are candle sweats? So candle sweats are very common in soy candle products. Um, usually this happens post-production because Soy is a vegetable-based wax, and when it goes through drastic temperature influxes, so it goes from being really, really, really cold to room temperature to maybe really, really hot to room temperature again, any type of temperature fluctuation can cause 
soy candles to sweat. Um, that kind of sweating, it's just literally moisture out of the vegetable wax. It comes to the surface of the candle and literally all you do is wipe it off with even a paper towel and Bob's your uncle. It does not affect the performance of your candle whatsoever. But I know what you're probably thinking. Sensi isn't soy. Sensi is paraffin. And I too was a little confused. You know, why are we led to believe that paraffin has the same properties or goes through the same issues because it's not even made up of the same material. <laughs> like, it's just, it's not scientifically possible. Paraffin does not <clears throat> naturally sweat like soy products do. So what is the sweat on your paraffin products? That, ladies and germs, is the fragrance oils coming out of your bar. And regardless of what we have been led to believe, it has absolutely nothing to do with storage. And I think we covered that pretty well in the second video. Um, in that video, I think I showed you five clamshells at, randoms for, at random from other companies. Three out of the five were natural soy products and not one of them was sweating, even in um, my home, even though they were shipped to me from parts of the States to Michigan all the way up to Canada in the dead of winter. Uh, some of them were shipped to me from Regina, Saskatchewan back in the fall when it was cool, but, you know, not quite freezing cold. So not even my soy, which scientifically would be excusable if it was sweating, is not sweating. Do you know what I'm saying? So why is the Scentsy Bar sweating? I can assure you that it is 120% a production issue. So fun fact about Sarah is I have made candles for just over 14 years as a hobby. And oh man, oh man, it is a craft as old as time. But let me tell you, it is pretty scientific. It's, you know, at first I thought it was a matter of I'm going to go to Michael's and buy whatever wax, whatever fragrance oil they have in a double broiler and call it a day mix it all in a pot and I'm going to make a killer candle. <laughs> oh man, did I make some pathetic excuses for candles, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> like, it's a bloody miracle I didn't burn down the house because I didn't realize there was such an exact science to candle making. Um, reasons that paraffin candles um, or the oils will separate from paraffin wax rather. Several things can cause this. Um, common things for beginners or common things that you will find um, common causes from hand poured beginners are temperature. So temperature is super important. Uh, you heat up your wax, melt it down to a liquid base, right? And then you need to take a temperature reading because if your wax is super, super hot, what's going to happen when you dump in the fragrance oil? You're going to burn half of it off, right? So will you end up with a scented product? Mm. Yes, but it would be better if you poured the fragrance in at the ideal recommended temperature. If you pour the fragrance oil in while the wax is too cool, scientifically, these two components don't want to bond together. It's kind of like oil and water, right? They don't want to stick together. So the perfect temperature, not too hot where it's burning off the fragrance oils, but not too cool where the fragrance oils won't bond to the wax. That's why ideal temperature, pour temperature, is very at utmost important. Then there's also stirring. It's super important that you stir the heck out of your wax. And I figured this out, again, when I was a newbie candle maker. You have to stir and stir and stir and stir. And just when you think your bloody arm is gonna fall off, then you have to change directions and stir and stir and stir and stir. Then you have to wait a couple minutes and stir all over again. Like you stir till your arms fall off. Um, just, you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure that fragrance oil bonds to your wax and it doesn't separate. Especially when you're making candles because 
what happens when you get a pool of fragrance oil on top of a candle? That's a bloody fire hazard all in itself, you know? You just want to burn the wick. You don't want to light the whole thing on fire. <clears throat> in this case, we're not talking about candles, but essentially it all works the same way. Those are very, very common beginner errors when people are making candles as to why their paraffin candles will sweat and the fragrance oil comes out of the finished product. Um, do I for one second think that that's what's happening to Scentsy products? Absolutely not. Since he's been doing it for 14 years, I don't think that they're beginners at all. The next one is Barrett Wax Crafts Pure Snoozy Melt in a fancy bun. Look how beautiful that is. Have you ever seen a prettier brick? And look at all of that lavender. Oh, my word. That is a pound, a full pound of wax, folks. It's heavy as all get out. Makes me want to go to sleep right now. Also, the thing about um, Scentsy is that they stopped hand pouring years ago. I don't think that they're making beginner's errors and and they're not hand pouring it either. I've never been to Sensi's um, manufacturing facility in Idaho, but I've seen pictures, I've seen videos of it. We're talking state-of-the-art machinery that's pouring Sensi wax. I Surely, if they realize that there's a sweating issue with their wax, I'm sure it would literally be the push of a multi-million dollar button to fix it like that. They would adjust the temperature settings on the machinery. They would adjust the mixing settings on the machinery. It would be such an easy fix. So what is left, you ask? The fragrance load. Very often we hear, um, when Sensi is asked why they choose food grade paraffin, time and time again, you can read it right in the Sensi fact sheet. They claim that they choose food grade paraffin for its scent loading capabilities. And again, going back to basic 101 of candle making, it doesn't matter what kind of oil or sorry, oil wax you use, whether it's paraffin, food grade paraffin, soy, soy para blends, um, palm wax, palm soy blends, doesn't matter. Every single wax has a maximum amount of fragrance oil that you can add to it. There's a certain percentage that your fragrance oil will be able to bond. If you put too much fragrance oil, it will seep. So I started to look into food grade paraffin and I looked at distributors as close as Village Craft Candle Company or Village Craft Supplies or whatever it is in St. Mary's, Ontario, which is only about an hour from me. I checked large, like big, big name North American suppliers. I even checked global trade suppliers for various different waxes. Um, and the global trade ones will only sell it by the ton. And every single wax at every single level has a maximum fragrance load percentage. And it's scientifically what the wax will be able to hold before it starts to sweat. Um, I found it rather interesting that they say that they choose food grade paraffin for its superior scent loading capabilities when on average out of all of these companies big or small their food grade paraffin only held between 5 and 10 percent fragrance loads meanwhile we know that um, all natural soy can hold uh, 12 certain all natural products can hold up to 16 or 18 percent so I found it interesting that they would say that food grade paraffin has superior scent loading capabilities when there are natural wax products on the market that can hold higher percentage. But I did find that paraffin is the cheapest alternative on the market. And then in, it's, it's all fine and dandy to say we choose whatever wax it may be for its superior scent loading capabilities, but the Scentsy Sweats is basically disproving that claim because Scentsy Wax is not holding the fragrance. 
So I was like, what the heck is going on? I wonder if Sensi has ever published anything specifically. I wonder if there's ever been any interviews or any publication in regards to the percentage of fragrance oils in a Scentsy bar. <clears throat> And to be perfectly honest, I, it didn't take long. I didn't have to look hard or far. All you have to do is type into Google percentage of fragrance oil in a Scentsy bar and the information pops up. I think it was 12, 15 different pages of sources. And I can read you the exact quote. Where is it here? Sensi uses natural food grade paraffin, a natural food grade paraffin wax blend selected for its superior scent loading capabilities, melting point and firmness. The amount of fragrance load for a Sensi wickless candle is 15 to 18% oil compared with 5% for regular wicked candles. So that was published in the 2013 Sensi fact sheet. But the other very interesting thing to me was that out of all of these pages and pages and pages, all I was finding were websites belonging to independent Sensi consultants who basically quoted this off the 2013 Sensi fact sheet. So next page, next page, next page. It's more consultant pages. I cannot find one Sensi page, not on the workstation, not on our personal websites, not on Google, nowhere to be found. I even scrolled through pages and pages and pages of Google images trying to find a copy of the 2013 Sensi fact sheet stating that they're putting 15 to 18% fragrance loads in these bars. And I cannot find anything. It's been wiped off the internet direct from Sensi. But that's the thing about people who just you know, copy verbatim is that they put it on their website and Sensi might have taken it down from their pages, but none of these consultants have. So, of course, I always want to go direct to the source. And I don't for one second think that hundreds of consultants made up the exact same sentence. They're not telepathically sharing this information. I did even find, uh, I managed to find um. It was an article in the top 50 household product brands for 2011. Sensi landed 27 on that list. And this is an outside resource. It's an article that quoted Sensi as saying that they use 15 to 18% fragrance oils in a wax that typically only holds 5 to 10%. Um, it can be argued that you can stretch it by using chemical additives like Viber, but usually Viber and all of these additional heavy-duty chemicals that you add to your wax usually, maybe, helps you stretch your fragrance load by 2 to 3%. If you try and put too much chemical additives into wax, it actually locks out your fragrance load. So it's a total waste. So I do believe that, that, you know, you can stretch it, but what had me most confused is why the heck I couldn't find that on an official Sensi page. Everybody and their brother had quoted it from Sensi, but Sensi no longer seemed to advertise this to be true since 2013. Remember in one of my previous videos, I mentioned uh, uh, about the, <laughs> the triple scented candle a few years ago. So turned out it, it just, it just ended up to be like a total marketing scheme. It was a gimmick, right? Because scientifically, there's no such thing as a triple scented candle. Essentially, they were using triple the amount of wax and they were doing exactly as I explained, adding a boatload of additives to stretch it maybe 2%, but what they were failing to mention is that they were tripling, also tripling the amount of wax. It turned out to be totally bogus. There was no such thing as a triple scented candle. But the good thing is, is it got everyone talking, right? Um, 
So it seemed that the general consensus, even about years ago, about this triple scented candle is that there's no need to max out your saturation levels if you're using high quality fragrance oils to begin with. Tons of companies do perfectly fine with adding five to 10% fragrance oil, what their wax can handle, and it throws like a beast. It smells fantastic because they're purchasing high quality fragrance oils. There's no need to max out their saturation levels. So that was kind of like the running joke at the time about this triple scented candle, right? But consumers who don't make candles like you and I, we don't know any different. You hear something, this is triple scented, this lasts for days, this is the best product ever. Of course, we're going to buy it. So anyhow, um, that's besides the point. <clears throat> I just, I just found it really, really odd. And I, I seem to, this week, regardless of reading and reading and reading for days and days and days, it seemed, I, I kept coming up with more questions than answers. I understand scientifically what works and what doesn't when you're talking about trying to mash fragrance oils into wax, but I'm just a little confused about the why. If Sensi claims that this food grade paraffin, their proprietary blend, has maximum superior scent loading capabilities, why won't the fragrance oil stay in it? And then why would they make a claim in 2013 that they're using 15 to 18% fragrance oils when there's really no need to if they are in fact high quality fragrance oils? Um, and then the other thing that I was looking at were customer complaints. I'm like, when did the alleged Scentsy Sweats start? Sure enough, <laughs> I looked and looked and looked. And to be honest, I read thousands of customer complaints about the Scentsy Sweats. I read thousands of customer complaints about how the fragrance doesn't last anymore. These people say that it used to, you know, one or two cubes used to last for a week in their house. I can't speak to that. I was always warming usually about, I'd say on average, four bars a month. So I can't say that I ever got weeks out of one cube of fragrance. Um, I don't know about that claim, but thousands of customers are complaining that the scent doesn't last as long as it used to. And thousands of customers are complaining that the Scentsy Sweats are a new thing as of 2013. And there's no ownership or accountability. Every single thing I read is you're not storing it correctly and this is something you've done but it doesn't make sense because scientifically it doesn't happen post-production. This is happening while it's being made. So it has nothing to do with the way the customer is storing it afterwards. Of course, I would never advise anyone to leave wax out on your back deck in the blazing heat of the sun. But what, okay, free thinking cap on right now. What would happen to this if you exposed it to extreme temperatures? Do you think just the fragrance oil would liquefy and come out of the wax? No, the whole thing would bloody turn to liquid, right? It does, even the excuse doesn't make any sense. And I just find it so frustrating that there's lack of accountability. So when I can't find the answers, I'm a firm believer in going directly to the source. So I called, you know, I called because I want answers. So I said to them, hey, I'm online. I'm trying to figure out the percentage of fragrance oil in a Scentsy bar. And every single website that I have found is not a, an official Scentsy website. These are all WordPress pages or independent websites of independent Sensi consultants. 
I don't want to just take somebody else's word for it. I need to know direct from Scentsy how much fragrance oil is in a Scentsy bar. Is it still 15 to 18% like it was in 2013? Want to know what the answer was? The doll on the phone congratulated me on my sales for the month of December and then told me for that information I would need to contact the Sensi legal department. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This is information that is available on the internet. Perhaps it's outdated information and that's fine. If so, just tell me that was in 2013. This is how we do it now. But no, I need to contact the legal department for that information. It doesn't make any sense. Because five years ago, they were shouting it from the rooftop. We are the triple scented wax bar. And now you got to go through lawyers for information? What? Honestly, this week I have been left with more questions than answers. It just doesn't make sense. So that is the best that and the closest I have come to is I have no doubt that they are maxing their saturation levels. They are putting way too much fragrance oils, I have no idea why, into a product that cannot handle how much they're putting in. Henceforth, you get the Scentsy sweats. I have no idea why they're no longer bragging about that or telling people the exact figures. I don't know why you have to go through the legal department for that information. But what I do know is that not all fragrance oils are created equally. Lots of fragrance oils are suitable for candles. And candle fragrance oils don't have to be skin safe because the IFRA thinks that the fragrance oils are staying in the candle. So it doesn't matter if they're skin safe, if you are keeping them in the product they are intended for, right? Skin safe fragrance oils are things that, you know, you find in all of our products, our, our body products, lip products, eyes, and the IFRA mandates via safety data sheets, okay? Every fragrance oil has its own safety data sheet and it will say you can use five to 10% in candles. You can use 0.4% in body care products. You can use 0% in oral care products. You can use 0.9% in baby care products because not all oils are created equally and not all fragrance oils are skin safe and even if they are skin safe there is not one fragrance oil on the market that is skin safe if you're tripling quadrupling the usage and not keeping the oil in the finished product So that was my only other question to Sensi. Are these fragrance oils skin safe? I was put on hold. They came back and said yes. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. And once again, I have way more questions than answers. Maybe next week I will be able to find out more. But stay tuned because next week I have Scentsy Bars. I have a Hendrix Scentsy Bar that has been sitting on my fireplace. Yep, that's right, folks. It's been sitting on the mantle of my gas fireplace for the last two weeks. We're going to leave it up there for two more weeks and see how bad it sweats in extreme temperatures. I have another bar that is in my daughter's coat pocket. It is going back and forth to school with her in and out of extreme temperatures because we live in Canada. So we will see how that bar fares 
after a week in a coat pocket in, in and out of extreme temperatures. I also have two Scentsy bars purchased on the exact same day, stored the exact same way. One is sweating, one isn't. We are going to have a melt off and decide whether or not the Scentsy sweats actually affect the finished product. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe, smash the bell above for future content notification. Stay tuned. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Bye for now.